I'm Dick Griscom. I'm the uh, Associate University Librarian for Department of Libraries at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm sitting now in one of the nine libraries I'm responsible for. This is the Fisher Fine Arts Library. And I'm here because the director of the library left for a new job at Columbia back in September. So I'm interim head of the library. It's a historic building, beautiful historic building dating from the late 19th century. In fact, let's go outside and look at it. Okay, so this is the Fisher Fine Arts Library. It was designed in the late 19th century by Frank Furness. And this building served as the main library of the University of Pennsylvania until 1963 when the collection outgrew the capacity of the stacks and the library moved into this building over here, the uh, Van Pelt Library, right there. That's where my main office is, so let's go over there for a second. So here we are in my office in the Van Pelt Library. I thought I would tell you a little bit about myself. I've been a library administrator for the past five years. And before that, I was a music librarian for three decades. And for the first seven years of my career, I was a music cataloger. So I have some firsthand knowledge of subject analysis and the description of music. After leaving the field of music cataloging, I became a music library administrator. And I did quite a bit of work editing and indexing. I was the editor of Notes, the Journal of the Music Library Association. And I also wrote um, a research guide on the recorder, the musical instrument. Uh, the first edition came out in 1994, and then there were subsequent editions, uh, second edition in 2003, and the third edition, the third and final edition in 2012. It's a classified bibliography of writings on the recorder with an index that provides subject analysis. So I've kind of maintained an interest in classification and subject analysis, although I'm, I'm not working with it on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm guessing that uh, because my hands-on experience with music cataloging is more than a quarter century old, Richard asked me to have a look at seven classic texts in music cataloging and create a census of the facets described in them. The, uh, the first is George Sherman Dickinson's classification of musical compositions from 1938, and here's a 1938 edition from our collection. It's a book that's been written about and talked about far more than it's actually been used in libraries. I guess in that way it's kind of like Ferber. Then the, uh, the second is uh, Minnie Elmer's article, Classification, Cataloging, and Indexing, which was first published in the Music Library Association Supplement for Members in 1957 and uh, reprinted in this Reader and Music Librarianship in 1973 with that interesting cover. Um, Minnie Elmer uh, is not someone I ever knew, but you know that name, Minnie Elmer, conjures up a particular image in your mind, and I'm, I'm sure she was nothing like that. I imagine she was an excellent ballroom dancer who specialized in the tango. Here is Minnie Elmer's 1957 article in the Reader, Classification, Cataloging, Indexing. And I was also asked to look at another article in the Reader. This one is a 1951 article, first published in Music Review by Kathy Meyer Bear, Classifications in American Music Library. The next text I was asked to examine was the classic book from 1989, Richard Smaralia's Music Cataloging, which is not to be confused with the 1983 book by Richard Smaralia, Cataloging Music, which is on a completely different topic. I'm in Urbana, Illinois, the home of the University of Illinois, and behind me is the music building. Right over here is the music library, right there. 
This is where Richard Smaralia toiled from 1974 until 1986 and did much of his work on that book. Let's go inside. Okay, I'm back in Philadelphia, and I realize now that when I was in Urbana, I pulled the wrong book off the shelf. I should have pulled this one off. It was, I think, uh, maybe a couple of books down on the shelf. Uh, music cataloging. I made the classic mistake of pulling off cataloging music. So this is the book I should have pulled, the uh, 1989 book by Richard Smaralia. And the three chapters I was asked to look at cover three different topics. Chapter five covers subject analysis, which is used to refer to the general practice of categorizing materials by physical characteristics or content. It was in this chapter that I learned about the work of Karl Heinz Kohler in 1957, Olga Booth in 1975, Brian Redfern in 1978, and Kurt Dorfmuller in 1981. Also in this chapter, Smiralia lays out his own ideas on four elements for the subject analysis of music. Chapter six covers verbal subject analysis, which is assigning verbal descriptors to items. Smiralia mentions Library of Congress subject headings and PreC in this chapter. And then chapter seven covers classification, the fiscal placement of items based on their nature or content. Here, Smiralia covers the Dewey Decimal Classification, the Library of Congress Classification, the Dickinson Classification, and Answer, a classification for sound recordings. Then there are three essays in this little collection in celebration of Revised 780, a slim little volume published by the Music Library Association in uh, 1990 in its technical report series. Okay, and this is the last text I was asked to uh, look at. It's the introductory essay, Introduction to the Structure and Use of Library of Congress Subject Headings for Music and Materials about Music. In this volume, Music Subject Headings, which was compiled by uh, Harriet Hamasi, who uh, at that time was at Rutgers, and now she's the library director at Georgetown. There she is. And there's Brad, Brad on the beach in a somewhat pixelated photo. This was uh, published in 1998. These source texts were different in nature. Uh, Dickinson is itself a classification schedule. Many Elmer's and Kathy Meyer Bear's articles are surveys of cataloging and classification tools, mostly of historical interest at this point. The three chapters from Smiralia's 1989 book give summaries of several articles, classification schemes, and subject analysis tools that cover facets for music. And Smiralia himself offers his own ideas on facets. The essays from In Celebration of Revised 780 each deal with the same text, the 1980 revision of the 780 section of the Dewey Decimal Classification. And Brad Young's introduction goes into great detail about a, a single source, the Library of Congress subject headings. I read through each source and took notes on what was said about facets related to music. I recorded these notes in a file called Griscom-Notes using the Markdown Markup language, and I exported that file to the docx format, so that's a Microsoft Word format, and also to the HTML format, which can be read by a web browser. 
you should find these files in the uh, DAC2 participant data files folder in the Griscom folder. After I finished taking notes, I plotted the results in a spreadsheet. That spreadsheet is also in the Griscom folder. Its name is Griscom Classic Text Facets. The spreadsheet summarizes what I found, and that's probably what you'll find most valuable in that folder. If you have any questions about the spreadsheet, they should be answered in the Griscom Notes file. Let's have a look at the spreadsheet. I arranged the sources that discuss facets chronologically in the columns, moving left to right. Then I took note of the specific facets mentioned in the source. Uh, some of these facets deal with fairly objective, concrete concepts like uh, medium of performance, and creator. I highlighted these in light blue. Other facets involve concepts that are subjective and quite likely overlap with each other. For example, character, style, mood. I highlighted those in yellow. So after I recorded all the facets, I added up the number of sources citing each, and this number is recorded in the total column, column B. Then I sorted the entire list on column B so that the facets are arranged in descending order by the number of sources that use them. There are two facets that stand out by being cited by more than 10 sources, and that is a medium of performance and form of composition. Of the 14 facets that were cited three or more times, only four of them fall into that squishy subjective category. And those are character, style, topic, subject, and function, loca uh, function occasion. The other 10 are concrete objective concepts. So that's all I have for now. I'm sorry I'm not there with you for the first day of the Domain Analysis Clinic, but I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow.